Hello, I'm Julian Stander and I'm a lecturer in mathematics and statistics at the University of Plymouth. The aim of this uh, short video is first of all to uh, illustrate some of the um, sessions that we've been running uh, since uh, we've been in lockdown and uh, how they've uh, been delivered and also to uh, talk about some mathematical models uh, for uh, the COVID-19 epidemic. So uh, what you can see is uh, I've got my screen laid out uh, using several windows. In the window at the uh, top left uh, that I'm indicating with my mouse, uh, I'm going to write uh, some mathematics and some uh, description of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, below that, there's a window in, in which uh, I've got a document open. Now, I'm not going to talk about that document in any detail, but uh, it's there uh, uh, as, uh, to illustrate what uh, is available to uh, Plymouth University mathematics students. And in particular, uh, it's a uh, document that describes uh, what we say in the session. And those documents are made available to students before the sessions. In my third window here, I've got open some software, which I'm going to use to illustrate some of the ideas. This software is R. It's an industry standard software that anyone can use uh, in the sense that you can freely download it from the web. Okay, so what I want to talk to, uh, to you today uh, about is the number of cases of COVID-19 in England and uh, some mathematical models uh, for uh, those cases. So you'll see there in my graph, which I'm indicating with my mouse now, uh, I've plotted the cumulative number of cases against day starting from uh, the 1st of March. And I've indicated there on that scale the Sunday. So each of those uh, dashes uh, uh, represents uh, Sunday. Uh, so you can see that the number of cases uh, uh, increased very rapidly and then we can see by eye that that increased uh, uh, kept going uh, but it, it reduced the, the uh, rate of the increase uh, reduces uh, in the latter part of the curve. A very standard mathematical model that you've probably heard about uh, for uh, modeling very rapid growth is the exponential growth model. Now, the exponential growth model can be written as follows. So yt, which is what we're interested in modeling on the y-axis there, yt is equal to a multiplied through by exp of bt, the exponential function. Now a is assumed to be positive, beta is also assumed to be positive. t is time and again that, that's positive, that's going along this axis. Okay, what does this model represent? Well I can uh, sketch this model as follows. So here I have y of t and this model would represent a very rapid growth like this. If this were zero this would be the point a and the parameter beta controls how quickly uh, this curve grows. So the higher the value of beta the stronger the growth. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this software to fit uh, this exponential growth model to the number of cases of COVID-19 in England up to day 30. So up to the line that I've illustrated there. I'm not going to talk about uh, the details uh, of the fit, how I'm doing it, uh, that would be described, but I'm just going to show you the fit. So I've used the software R to illustrate the fit and you can see that this exponential growth model really fits the data rather well in the first 
uh, 30. But then, of course, it goes on and on. It, it grows and grows and grows. And that's because the exponential function that is used in the definition grows uh, continually. So this model is not a, a good model uh, for the whole of the uh, epidemic, but it does uh, do quite well in the early part uh, of the uh, epidemic. What we really need is a model that somehow uh, increases rapidly at the beginning, but then uh, slows down uh, as we go further on in time. And such a model is provided to us by the logistic growth model. So the logistic growth model uh, actually can come out of uh, the solution of a differential equation, as can the uh, uh, exponential growth model, uh, but that's a, a, a slightly different story. What we're interested in today is knowing about the forms uh, and the interpretation and the use of, of these models. So the logistic growth model mathematically can be written in this form here. So it's equal to y naught divided by one plus the exponential of minus t minus t naught over tau. And there are three parameters in this model, y naught, t naught and tau. And those three parameters are assumed to be positive. You may like to show, and it's not particularly hard to do so, that as t time uh, gets larger, that uh, y, uh, as expressed in the model, tends to y naught. So y t tends to y naught as t tends to infinity. And that actually follows from a property of the exp function, namely that. Um, exp of minus infinity equals zero. That's not a particularly precise mathematical statement, but that statement can be made precise by using uh, the theory of limits. You may also like to show that y evaluated at the point t0 is equal to y0 over 2. So what this logistic growth model looks like is the following. Here we have y of t, here we have t, here we have the asymptote, the limit at, uh, at drawn at y zero, and the model somehow comes up like that and then tends to the asymptote like that, to the limit. So it shows this rapid exponential growth here in the lower part, but then it slows down, as it were. And at t0, we take the value y0 over 2. Okay, the other parameter, tor, I'm not going to discuss uh, apart from to say that tor uh, controls the rate of the increase. Okay. So we can use our software to fit this model to uh, the data. And I've just got to run the code. Uh, so if you'll just uh, bear with me while I do that, hopefully that will do it. And uh, the blue line there is the uh, fitted logistic model to those COVID-19 cumulative cases. So you can see that model fits the data reasonably well. It doesn't do a, a, a perfect job, uh, but it doesn't do a bad job. And uh, I personally have been working uh, with uh, uh, another statistician uh, called Giovanni Sebastiani on models that do a better job in the two uh, tails of this curve. But for now, we'll just uh, work on the logistic uh, growth model, the one shown in blue there. 
And you may like uh, to try to show that the derivative of the logistic growth model, in other words, the derivative of y naught over one plus exp minus t t naught over tor is in fact equal to y naught over tor exp minus t minus t naught over tor divided by one plus the exponential function evaluated at the same thing or squared. So that is uh, a, a quite straightforward exercise that uh, people who have some familiarity with uh, calculus should be able to attempt. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, replot uh, the data and the logistic curve but I'm also going to show on the plot the derivative. So in the top, uh, here's the uh, um, graph that we saw before with the data and the logistic curve. And below it is the derivative of the logistic growth model, the derivative that we've just worked out uh, and written on this uh, um, piece of mathematics here. And what we can see there is that the derivative is always positive. It's always greater than naught. That's no surprise because this curve is always increasing. The blue curve is always increasing. The derivative gets larger up to t naught, and then the derivative gets smaller after t naught. So that's really uh, confirming what we said before, that this epidemic is accelerating up to t naught, and then uh, it decelerates. Okay, mathematically, this point at t naught, uh, where the uh, derivative has its uh, maximum, corresponds to a point of inflection of the uh, logistic growth model of the blue curve. In other words, uh, it corresponds to a point at which the blue curve has a zero second derivative. And uh, before t naught, um, the curve is convex, and after t naught, the curve is concave. Well, that uh, concludes uh, this brief discussion about the exponential and logistic growth models. We've seen their forms, we've briefly talked about some of their properties, and we've illustrated their use for. The, uh, for modelling of the COVID-19 epidemic in England. Now, during one of our sessions, of course, students are completely free to interrupt and to ask questions. We often set exercises to check how they're getting on with the material. So for example, one exercise could be to uh, differentiate the uh, logistic growth function, and then we'd go over that exercise with them. Um, and after the session, the whole of the recording uh, that has been made would be made available to them. So the document and the code would be made available before and then afterwards uh, the uh, recording would be put up onto the uh, website for them. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>